Hi everyone, this is Frank from Yolo Life. Yolo Box Ultra just received a 2.6.0 version update. In addition to routine interface optimizations and bug fixes, this update brings a huge new feature, VFA, which means video follow audio. Today's video will help you understand what VFA is and how to use the VFA on the Ultra. Video follows audio is a powerful automation feature. It is uh, commonly referred to as a VFA. If you need to conduct an interview or multi-camera live stream with just one person, VFA might help alleviate some of the backstage control pressure, allowing to focus more on the content creation. Before using VFA, please make sure that each of your video sources has its own separate audio channel in the Archer's audio mixer. If you are using an actual audio mixer, you will need to equip each camera with a microphone and switch to a separate audio input for each source. Given VFA's automated nature and scale, we've placed it in the audio switch control area in the bottom right corner of the toolbar. Look for the icon with the two cameras. If you don't see this icon, you might have hidden this feature previously. You can check the tool's order in the settings. Then tap on the red arrow on the far right, Start Video Follows Audio, to access the setting interface. Here we can see three uh, parameter settings, switch sensitivity, minimum switch, duration, and threshold. Considering the connection between these three parameters, to help everyone better understand them, we will introduce them in the following order. Minimum switch duration, threshold, and switch sensitivity. In the final section, we will provide two preset uh, solutions based on the list below, which you can directly apply to your live stream. Frequent and rapid scene switching is often a key indicator of a live stream going out of a control, while switch sensitivity and threshold can still potentially lead to unpredictability. The minimal switch duration setting can help mitigate these risks. When I set the minimal switch duration to 4 seconds, we can see that when I first make a sound, the video won't switch over immediately. Instead, the current video will remain on the screen for 4 seconds before switching to the video source where the sound was made. In general, setting the minimum switch duration to 2 seconds is the most suitable. However, if the pace of the live stream is faster, a shorter duration might be more appropriate. Now let's talk about the most important parameter setting, threshold. Before we dive into this parameter, let's first understand the concepts of a condition and action. So what does condition mean? What does action mean? There are three video sources. One is the shot A, one is the shot B, and the last one is the shot C. I need to set up a VFA loop between these three video sources. The first step is to select these three audio sources. Know that VFA currently supports setting up automatic switching logic between a maximum of three audio sources. Next, you'll see a list here. The left column is for condition and the right column is for action. The left column is fixed and cannot be charged, while the right column allows you to set your own options. It's important to know that the action library includes all video sources. Our live stream is showing the shot A, so the system considers the audio source and volume status of a shot A as the condition. In VFA, the condition is a video source being monitored, and its volume is used to determine if the switching criteria are met. The criteria is the threshold, which is the decibels threshold value. The available range for setting the threshold is from 0 to minus 60. Decibels. In simple terms, the condition is the audio source be monitored by the system. Threshold is the standard for determining volume changes, and the action is the operation to be executed when the condition is met. Now let's put this into practice. I will set the threshold to minus 20 decibels, set the condition to shot A, and set the action to shot A. Let's check it out. The live stream is showing shot B right now. Since neither shot B, shot C, or shot A are talking, their volumes are all below minus 20 uh, decibel threshold. When shot A starts talking and 
its volume exceeds uh, minus uh, decibel, you will see that the live stream automatically switch from shot B to shot A. And the live stream will stay on shot A as long as shot A is talking and the shot B and the shot C are silent. The conditions for switching from shot B uh, to shot A are uh, shot A's volume exceed the threshold while shot B and shot C volume do not exceed the threshold. Additionally, I would not recommend adding local video sources in the VFA system. When the local video sources are paused in the background, they cannot exceed the volume threshold and thus cannot meet the conditions to execute commands. Switch sensitivity is used to adjust system's response to audio changes. A higher sensitivity value makes the system more responsive, meaning a small sound variation will trigger a switch. A lower sensitivity reduces necessary switching, causing the system to only react to the more noticeable audio changes. It means more than just a switch delay that people can normally tell what it means from the word itself. It means more than a switch delay. We make it more sophisticated to, to be more advanced. Here's an example of a carved sound on the audio track. The volume change looks like a steep mountain with the highest peak being brief and the volume before and after the peak is almost zero. This kind of sound represents a subtle volume change. And here's an example of a normal speech on the audio track. Hi everyone, this is a friend from YOLO Live. From start to finish, the volume change is more like a plateau, starting at zero and followed by a stretch of consistently high volume without a roller coaster like fluctuation. This kind of a sound represents a clear audio change. With a high sensitivity, the system not only picks up on the obvious sound changes, but also reacts to the more subtle ones. Low sensitivity, on the other hand, only responds to the more significant sound changes. Switch sensitivity and threshold are two parameters that can easily be confused. In fact, a threshold acts as a volume gate. If the audio volume doesn't exceed this threshold, no matter how sensitive the system is, it won't trigger any switches. In other words, both cough and the speech sounds we used earlier exceeded the set volume threshold. Have we said switch sensitivity during a live stream depends on several factors, including the type of content, the level of background noise, and the desired switching frequency. If your live stream mainly consists of interviews, you can typically choose a lower sensitivity to ensure that switch happens only during noticeable audio changes. Lastly, in especially quiet environments, you can increase sensitivity slightly. However, in noisy settings, higher sensitivity could cause problems. It's best to test the setup beforehand to find the ideal setting. Let's go back to the list. In the condition column, the system provides all possible combination of audio sources that can be used as conditions. So how do we set the action of each condition to make sure the switching logic works as expected? Here I'm going to provide you with the two basic preset schemes, one for switching logic involving two audio sources, one for three audio sources. You can use these schemes to set up and adjust VFA setting logic preset. There are four possible condition combinations when working with the two audio sources. The first two are straightforward, independent conditions, video source 1 and video source 2. These are pretty simple to set up. You just need to select the matching video source in the action column. And it's easy to understand. When video source 1 exceeds the threshold and video source 2 doesn't, the stream will display the video source 1. Similarly, the video source 2 exceeds the threshold and video source 1 doesn't, the stream will show the video source 2. Aside from those two cases, there are more scenarios. Both video source exceed the threshold and both video source remain silent. This response to video source 1 plus video source 2 a silent option in the list. You can choose the target video source for the action based on your needs. It's important to know that if you select none as the action under the condition 
where both video source 1 and video source 2 exceed the threshold, it means the VFA system won't be triggered when both audio sources hit the threshold. The same logic applies to other conditions as well. If I have two interview guests, it's more suitable to choose three audio sources. At first glance, three audio sources have eight different conditions, which can be dizzying. In fact, I only need to characterize all video sources into single shots, group shots, and B-roll. Each single shot corresponds to the first three conditions in the list, which means whenever only one person is speaking in the interview, the first three conditions will ensure that the live stream will always show the speaker's individual shot. In the fourth condition following these three, there are multiple speakers, so the action corresponds to these four conditions are usually group shots. Therefore, you can choose any suitable group shot from these four options. When the live stream needs a break or uh, requires inserting additional information, that's when the bureau comes into play. So in the action setting for the uh, condition of silent, I can choose a pre-prepared local video source. Whether you choose two audio sources or three, the core of the VFA operational logic always revolves around the selected audio source. Therefore, I recommend choosing close-up shots of key participants rather than the two wide shots that show the entire scene or the close-up that focus on the specific details. Also, if you decide to use the VFA feature, I recommend letting VFA handle the entire live streaming control. Combining VFA with the manual scene switching can be difficult, like having two people trying to operate the same control panel at once. When manually switching scenes, it's easy to forget VFA's operational rules, which can make things uncontrollable. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more insightful content. Also, don't forget to join our user group on Facebook, where lots of customers share their use cases. Last but not least, if you have any questions and would like to know more about YOLO Live, you can contact us via email at contact at yololive.com. If your need is urgent, you can call us at plus 86-137-35-81-25-89. If you need to express uh, your needs through picture or videos, you can also contact us via WhatsApp. Uh, the number is still the same. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.